वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल माई डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रशांत मावानी आई होप यू ऑल आर गुड टूडे इज फोर्थ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी डे इज मंडे आई एम श्योर यू ऑल हैव एन्जॉयड योर वीकेंड लेट्स स्टार्ट टूडे इज डिस्कशन विद दिस कोर्ट बाई एब्राहम लिंकन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कोर्ट गिव मी सिक्स आवर्स टू चॉप डाउन अ ट्री एंड आई विल स्पेंड द फर्स्ट फोर शार्पनिंग द एग्स आई हैव टू वर्ड्स फॉर दिस वन फर्स्ट इज प्रिपरेशन एंड प्रैक्टिस दिस आर द टू कीज राइट और together they are this magic card that will give you that access to success think about it with this dear friends study iq has launched a smart course uh, this smart course is particularly designed for civil services examination it covers both pre and mains examination some of the best faculties of our country they have contributed in designing this whole course to find out more about it all you have to do is download our mobile application and the good news is that uh, as far as payment options are concerned you can get emi option as well you can you don't have to pay in one shot you can pay in installments too to download the pdf of today's lecture check out my telegram channel please make sure that you share this lecture with other students hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion and please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel dear dear friends uh, the first one that i have for you guys is why millions defied the lockdown one of the most important article of the day i will spend some around 10 15 minutes behind this article because here you will find two important concepts right and this concepts are important for your mains answer writing examination you can find an essay on this topic as well it's about basically poverty then we'll talk about bricks against covid-19 by the way the first article is from times of india this one is from hindu then we have slow release again from hindu during lockdown 3.2 is from times of india no comfort in numbers and then we have the nandal lessons so six articles to go the first one is why millions defied the lockdown as you can see on your screen this is not a new picture for you isn't it for all of us in fact we have seen many horrid pictures like this uh, people carrying their kids people carrying whatever they have right uh, on their on their head on their shoulders and uh, when this whole thing started uh, this lockdown thing then there were so many people like us you know we were asking this question that are they really going to walk 500 km can they do it with all the extra weight of their little bit of luggage that they have because it is clearly visible that they don't have any other asset if they have any sort of asset maybe a small house a mud house and it will be uh, in their villages right and this people are as you can say it's a very tough thing right it's uh, so many died as well uh, while traveling so there were so many questions going on uh, in our minds i can say that uh, why they are walking why they are not cooperating why they are not uh, staying where they are why they don't understand and all these things but if you dig this whole topic a little bit deeper then you find that uh, they were more anxious than fearful they felt more abundant than angry they were lacking that security and they were not lacking that courage it is right time that we now get rid of this poverty line and we need to focus on this dignity line people desperate to live cities were poor in assets not in aspirations and self esteem they were earning a livelihood they were not living on handouts they were not begging right they were breaking their back and they were doing everything possible to give their kids a better life a less hard life that they are going through we are so lucky to have see unfortunately we have poor people in our country and in this world as well it's 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 definitely a bad thing but if you compare our indian poors with poors of let's say few countries let's say in few pockets of philippines there are so many documentaries as well if you go through it you will find that we are lucky that our poor people right they are not snatching things from us there are so many countries where if you have something in your hand let's say if you even if you are having mobile phone or a packet of food there are few areas where people will literally snatch your clothes as well they will take away your shoes and everything that you have on your body because they are desperate right and when we are in that situation i think at present we can talk about all this uh, you know good things because we are not pushed uh, in that corner uh, once our survival instincts kicks in then we can see our real you know face when i say real i mean to say that it, it it's there in every one of us right we have that we have that uh, 
hunter gatherer thing in it in it within us it's very deep right and we don't nowadays we don't uh, come to that situation where we have to where that thing automatically takes over but then as well these people are composed right of course they are going through huge amount of pain but they are not snatching things they are the best thing they thought uh, will be to go back home so in those cities in which they have worked for a very long period of time it's very sad that they were not able to find anything um, you know anything that can that that they can hang on to they can rely on and unfortunately we have this paradox in our country we have on one side uh, world's biggest slum that is dharavi in the same city just 20 minutes away you will find some of the world's most expensive houses now this article is important because uh, back in 2011 12 one survey was conducted and that survey found that 22% indians were below poverty line right 22% population is poor basically now it's been nearly 9 8 9, 9 years and uh, till now till you know till now means from there till now we have uh, seen huge amount of uh, growth in various different aspects of our uh, country so we need a proper more up to date survey that can give us a proper figure because we don't know exactly how many people are at present living under poverty line then we have another interesting thing in our country which is of course very sad that uh, there are so many people who are living just above the poverty line just about you know they are right there on the border so if someone passes away like an earning member that family will go that it will plunge back into poverty if someone gets an illness even if a small fracture or something right then as well that family will plunge back into poverty if someone uh, loses a job in that family then as well they will plunge back into poverty so these people are also vulnerable but we don't calculate them we will calculate only this 22% and that is again 8 year old data so this article is talking about a very interesting thing it's called empowerment line mckenzy empowerment line i'll show it to you what exactly it is and how it works basically but we have this one more thing that we need to keep in our mind and that is the rapid expansion of gig economy so many people are working for ola uber and then you have uh, this sort of jobs as well nowadays that you work for uh, on contract basis so you work for 9 10 months for a particular company you design things for them mostly computer work and after your contract is over they will extend it or they will give it to someone else or, and you have to find something else so this sort of people right th- this is basically gig economy that basically gig economy means that you are not a permanent staff of any company right you are like a um, like a like a wayfarer or maybe like a like a wanderer right you will work for few months here then that job will get over you'll find something in advance or maybe you have to stay Uh, vacant or you don't do anything for a few months till you find next thing so this is something that is getting quite common in our country so if you take out an average then we find that uh, in few months you have made huge amount of money or i would say a reasonable amount of money in few months you are very dry and then again you have medium and so this is like a, you know there is no fix uh, you can say income Uh, when you are in gig economy so this is again a matter of concern so we have to look after this sort of people as well they it may look like they are working in big offices but they are not permanent staff so i hope uh, you have got the meaning of this whole gig economy thing now coming back to this M- mckinsey empowerment line this empowerment line or this whole concept of mckinsey is that uh, you need to have eight basic things drinking water as you can see on your screen let me not down uh, so drinking water education energy food healthcare housing sanitation social security you need to have all these eight things then only you will get on and of course it is quite logical if we have access to all these eight things 24 by 7 right or whenever you need for example if you need social security and if it if that is available in your uh, worst phase then then it should be accessible and should be available whenever you need it so this are some basic things for a life with dignity the problem is poverty line as per poverty line only 22% population is 
living below poverty line but if you calculate if you look at our people or families with this empowerment line then you find that 56 percent population of our country is below this empowerment line and i think this poverty line concept is quite outdated what we need to focus now is empowerment line uh, you know this whole theory or this whole concept should be based on empowerment line that we need to check this thing that uh, it doesn't matter if you are living in 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 the you know the, the most poor area or living in s suburban area you need to have all this every single person in our country they should even if that person is a migrant laborer then as well his or her family should get all these eight basic things and then that's how we should calculate whether you are living um, you know in poverty how much poverty we have we need to calculate based on this empowerment line now so far jam trinity has uh, you know I would say uh, it has produced its result. Jam Trinity, you have this Jantan account, Aadhaar number and mobile phone. What we need to do now is we need to upgrade this Jam Trinity. We need to make it uh, you know, more adaptable or it should be flexible enough that if there is any sort of emergency, then it should add on things on real time. And just adding things will not help. You need to inform people as well. I believe now, you know, what I have seen, right, I don't have any survey for this thing, but it's my observation. Nowadays, even, you know, this uh, unskilled laborers, this migrant workers, right, unskilled, most unskilled people, they as well, they have at least mobile phone. I'm not saying they will have the latest one, but they will have one contact number. So you can send them text messages if there is something like that in, in future, uh, then, then you can like if there is a natural calamity or maybe second wave of coronavirus, then you can send them, you can contact them. When I say you, I mean to say government can contact them, government can send them text messages, and they can provide real-time uh, data or maybe phone call. Uh, you can set up call centers and people will call them, each and every person, and will inform them that, uh, see, we know that you are somewhere here, right? Uh, confirm your location. Okay, we are going to send someone to help you, uh, how many me family members as per our data, we can see that you are, you have four total members in your family, you have two kids, maybe this age, and you know, we can have all these things, and then you can tell them, we know you, we know where you are, and help will reach to you in this many minutes, or maybe this many hours, I want, we want you guys to stay where you are, stay safe, look after your kids, etc. This sort of advice can be given and we can also tell them that do make sure that you inform other people who are around you, your colleagues, your friends, everyone, right? Make sure that you, we are trying to call each and every one of you, but make sure that you too pass this message that help will arrive to you soon. So this will give that sense of confidence. People, if you, if you update them every 15 minutes or one hour, that help is just one hour away from you, after 15 minutes, you update them with a text message that we are coming there in 45 minutes. And if we can do this thing, if we do this thing, this will create a trust, right? People will trust government. And this is a big thing, right? If you, if you can give hope in, in this rough phase, then that is a big thing. People will hang on. They will obey you. They will follow orders. Then we can have this Aadhaar Plus platform where you can take extra information from people. See, I, I know that people will talk about two things. When we say Aadhaar or upgrading Aadhaar or Aadhaar Plus, people will say, what about security? Government has to sort out the security thing as well as privacy. These are the two things. If you can guarantee these two things, then people will provide you their j job status, income, assets, access to amenities, residence, contact numbers, etc. And this will help you design and deliver things more accurately, more effectively, more efficiently. And Aadhaar Plus database can also be used for vulnerability index. You can prepare this uh, empowerment line. You can prepare vulnerability index. You know exactly how many people are living in a very bad condition. What are the things that are missing? You can add all those things as well. That water, if you, if you get water connection, then this will be upgraded on your Aadhaar. That uh, your home has got water connection. You you are having this LPG connection, electricity, food, etc. So. This is the thing that we need because the reason I'm saying or the reason I feel this is important, of course, it's an important topic for your examination, but if you look at it, right, there are scientists who are saying that uh, this global warming and uh, this catastrophe associated with global warming is just around the corner. 
So in future, if we, God forbid, we don't want to see this sort of thing, we don't want to try this thing as well. Try in the sense we don't want to provide things to people in emergency basis. We want them to live as normally as all of us are living. But God forbid, if there is anything like that, then, you know, we can, means natural calamity or anything, then they will get basic items through which they can hang on and survive. Labor Ministry is also working on creating something similar. It's called U-Win. So progress should be made public. We don't know exactly where, at which stage it is, this U-Win thing. So these are the things, right? I hope you have learned so many things from this uh, discussion. There are so many points that I have added here. And I want you guys to uh, think about it as well. Very important concept for your mains examination. Uh, dear friends, uh, BRICS against COVID-19. BRICS, you have uh, five countries. One is Brazil. Then you have uh, R stands for Russia. Brazil is uh, in South America, of course. Russia, Asian, European, Asian mix, you can say. Technically in Asia, but uh, uh, part of its culture is European. Then you have uh, India, China, and then you have South Africa. This is a country of African continent. So global war against novel coronavirus is going on. Every BRIC nation is doing something and something apart from Brazil, unfortunately, right? Uh, other countries are doing quite well. Let's start with India. So India is world's largest producer of this hydroxychloroquine. And it has provided this medicine to Sark nations, to Gulf region, Russia, Brazil, Israel, USA. And uh, this is the stage, right, where India should create one inclusive BRICS-driven pharma alliance where we can produce more vaccines and medicines for other nations. China has, has also responded quite strongly. China is helping Iran, Italy. China started this Health Silk Road doctrine. It supplied some 31 tons of necessary gas to uh, the city of Rome. And uh, six days later, that is on 18th March, it helped uh, Milan City. And it is helping various different cities via air. Means it's basically transferring all these items uh, via aeroplanes to various different uh, countries of Europe. As far as Russia is concerned, you'll be quite uh, surprised to know this thing that uh, U.S. President also requested things from Russia, and Russia delivered medical supplies and experts. Uh, they landed in this New York's airport. Uh, since uh, Soviet times, uh, Russia has top-of-the-line emergency services which are equipped to handle any kind of emergency including biological attacks and uh, nuclear radiation and chemical weapon attacks so russia is quite advanced and so many of us can learn so many things from russia uh, south africa is doing everything that is possible to to implement uh, this uh, whole lockdown and other strategies pan africa and uh, Bra this brazil as i told you uh, this BRICS nation, Brazil is the only country that is not doing enough. Uh, so it needs a bit of course correction. They need to change so many things like they need proper lockdown, proper isolation, proper testing and all these things. And BRICS nations, other nations, or other four countries, they can definitely guide and help uh, this uh, country called Brazil. Uh, now, uh, overall, you can say that uh, BRICS has played a reasonably good role in this humanitarian assistance and disaster relief what we need to do now is a uh, step two could be a next step can be um, you know merging with or coordinating with WHO European nations North American countries and creating this big group and pool of resources through which we can uh, have a global assault on this coronavirus new development bank that is uh, based in Shanghai and it's a BRICS bank, basically. The name is a New Development Bank. So New Development Bank is also providing money to all these countries. Like China got $1 billion, India got $1 billion, South, America, South Africa and Brazil as well got money from NDB to, to fight this coronavirus and this financial requirement, uh, finance that is required for fighting this uh, challenging time. I have one question for you. Can you give me the name of this NDB president who is the president of New Development Bank? So, New Development Bank's uh, president uh, has said that uh, one, uh, beg your pardon, $10 billion, its capacity is to provide more, uh, this $10 billion 
for this crisis related assistance to BRIC member countries. So this money should be utilized. If you can get this much money, not one country, but let's say if everyone will get two billion dollar, then this will be a big help, right? Uh, we need to get rid of this coronavirus as quickly as possible. Then we have uh, one article on slow release. Uh, slow release is, uh, I see this whole thing as from battery point of view, right? If you, if you observe a battery or, you know, how battery works. So if your car battery, if you are uh, using your car daily, then your battery will be charged. But let's say if you have not turned on your car since the start of this lockdown, then if your car is new, good car, then battery will still, means, uh, you know, fingers crossed it will, it will work or else you need to give it a jump start or external help. And if you don't do that now, then after a few days, it may reach to a point where you have to take out that battery and you have to send it to a store where they will charge this battery for 24 hours and then only you would be able to use this or you have to replace it as well. So this applies to our economy that if you don't turn economy, if you don't um, gradually uh, lift this lockdown, then we may reach a stage where we need, uh, you know, where we will uh, drop below up we will plunge below this zero as far as growth figure is concerned we will be negative basically or in red so balancing lives and livelihoods is important and uh, as we know that lockdown is extended for two more weeks there are few states like kerala they have uh, retained some curbs in green zone as well our country is divided into three zones basically districts are divided into various different districts are divided into this uh, three zones so green is the safest and uh, this red is the most dangerous Unfortunately, big cities are going to be in red, so they are our economic engines, so they are not going to start uh, in near future. The lockdown may extend in these big cities. So what we need is, we need to create more tests, as we know, right? And until and unless we find a medical remedy, we have to, this is going to be our new reality. Um, you know, wearing a mask, uh, hand washing, keeping a physical distance. These are the things that are going to be uh, normal for next few months. And we have to prepare ourselves for it. There are a few states, they have to prepare themselves for uh, people coming from West, various different parts. There are people coming from various different parts like West Asia and elsewhere. So we have to create e enough room for them, quarantine facilities and other things, testing facilities, of course. During lockdown 3.0, O or 3.0 again something that is associated with the same article that we are discussing this one is uh, from uh, times of india this article during uh, lockdown 3.0 it's basically an editorial so dear friends uh, you know this green red and uh, yellow thing right this orange basically green orange and uh, red zones uh, that we have in our country at present so every state has to follow this boundary limits that are designed by central government you cannot breach that you can you can tighten that thing means if you want you can keep more harsh rules for your green zone but you cannot go more soft uh, in in with other things right so you have to follow you have to stick with central government's guidelines this is something that every state has to follow the step towards allowing some resumption of activity is welcome the main focus here of the government is and the Prime Minister is also trying to do this th the same thing that we want step by step incrementally we want to increase economic activities in our country because we want to save jobs as well and we cannot go on like this forever. Now the biggest hurdle that we are finding is supply chain particularly after the introduction of GST you know how it works right everything is connected with each other. So after the implementation of this uh, GST, uh, things are getting a bit difficult now. It means GST is good in normal times, but GST is not designed to deal with this sort of epidemics, of course. So GST, bill generation and all these things are creating a bit of problem. And uh, good news again, as far as this ec economy is concerned, uh, things are moving a bit slowly, uh, but let's hope that... Uh, things will get back to normal as soon as or as quickly as possible as per CII it, uh, CII has said that it will take more than one year good thing is uh, as far as this million testing is concerned we have tested more than million people in our country so that's a good thing and infection rate is uh, quite uh, low it's just a four percent compared to 16.5 in US and 7.4 in Germany 
and uh, you know th- there are many countries there there are many people who are saying that we need to have we need to follow what south korea is doing we need to follow what usa is doing but the thing is every country will have their own uh, standards right uh, you cannot uh, have same standards for the whole world you can have same technology or maybe uh, science could be universal but you have to customize how you want to conduct tests how many people you want to take in which are your danger zones and which are your safe zones and things like that based on your culture and based on your a local requirement so following one standard is i think not a good idea we need more customization and that's i think that's what we are doing then we have one more article again it's about lockdown and things it's about west bengal west bengal is not doing that great this article is basically criticizing the west bengal government uh, they have uh, Uh, recorded the total 922 cases uh, west bengal is the fourth populous state in our uh, country and uh, as far as uh, testing is concerned it is in the f- uh, fourth it ranks uh, you know fourth lowest in our nation as far as testing this coronavirus patients are concerned national average is not that great but then as well national average is 721 tests per million west bengal average is 212.6 tests per million so it's very sad very unfortunate that this politics is going on and uh, uh, mamta benerji did quite well uh, you know before narendra modi ji announced uh, national lockdown mamta ji announced uh, this state lockdown and uh, she was uh, ahead right testing and demonstrating how social distancing will work and all these things were going very well in the starting phase but now this state is far behind uh, 13% case fatality rate this is very high as well so at present the best thing this state can do is test as many people as possible right to provide uh, increase or boost their health facilities and uh, you know th- we have still two weeks to go so this time should be used to cover those lost ground and one most important concept that i find most important lines that i find in this article is this that a higher number of cases in only a ref- is only a reflection of how active the state has been invading a war against the virus while a higher case fatality fatality rate uh, serves as evidence of poor response so if your state is having high numbers that does not mean that you are doing bad that means that you are testing more people but more people are dying that is that means that you are not doing enough that you are not providing enough facilities or you don't have simply enough facilities then uh, nanded lesson uh, it's a place in uh, maharashtra it's a, it's a, it's a place uh, there is a gurudwara in nanded and uh, this whole thing was in news because a few days ago punjab registered some 100 100 plus new cases and uh, these people uh, pilgrimage right they went to this uh, pilgrim of uh, uh, this nanded and uh, this pilgrims they came back uh, from nanded to punjab and uh, they were tested and they were found positive so there was this blame game between maharashtra and punjab and that is very unhealthy this article is talking about uh, migration migration has played a key role and migration is not just about uh, you know working somewhere else migration where is a temporary long term migration so a temporary migration is like a, like a small picnic or a travel where you travel to various different parts of our country and all these things right long term short term medium term migration has added economic growth Um, in our country as well as around the world as well you will find the same thing that migration has played a key role in economic growth and love agrawal he has said a very right statement he said that we have to fight the infection not the infected there is no point in blaming someone right if someone is infected then if you are blaming that person that you are spreading virus that's not going to help us you have to fight infection right we have to provide facilities to those people who are infected they are this unfortunate people who got this virus so help them right fight the virus not the people that is the message and each and every religious organizations as well as uh, religions and people they have to understand this thing that eid diwali guru uh, purab Krish, uh, christmas all this uh, uh, you know festivals we want to be able to celebrate it as we used to do earlier on we have to maintain phys- physical distancing and that's what I mean, you know we you have to you cannot uh, in the name of uh, religion you cannot to say that uh, there is no right and things at present we are living in a sort of emergency so every one of us has to understand that we have to change the way we used to do things until and unless we find a medicine after that we can be back to normal 
न्यूज आइटम्स सेंट्रल हेल्थ टीम्स टू मॉनिटर ट्वेंटी डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स विद हैवी केस लोड यू कैसे गुजरात फेटालिटी रेट इज क्वाइट हाई फाइव पॉइंट थ्री देन है देन यू हैव मध्य प्रदेश वेस्ट बंगाल महाराष्ट्र कर्नाटका एक्सेट्रा अनफॉर्चुनेटली फाइव ऑफ अवर सोल्जर्स मार्टर्ड इन दिस होल टेर फाइटिंग ऑपरेशन सो इट्स वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट राइट मे गोड ब्लेस देयर सोल्स एंड more strength and power to their family members hats off to these soldiers who are protecting us delhi is ready to deal with covid-19 has been said by cm kejriwal economic uh, recovery uh, may take uh, one year or more over 3200 migrants arrive home in uttar pradesh uh, 27 bangladeshi nationals held in assam and uh, javadekar slams report on press freedom and this report is called reporters without borders our rank is 142 out of 180 countries uae books uh, three more indians on charges of spreading hate saudi investments in india on track despite economic downturn and last one is that kim did not undergo any surgery has been said by south korea and this is your question on north korea and south korea and uh, that's everything in today's discussion thank you very much god bless you all jai hind